because the false self projects a fearful world that seems to be full of dangers and full of attack, we then create a middle zone and we fill this middle zone with valued objects and people. These are basically our false idols. They are idols that are meant to protect us. And in another sense, they are children's toys. So we create these idols as a barrier around the self. And we use these idols to hold our own judgment against the world. And it says in the Course, Judge not, for he who judges will have need of idols, which will hold the judgment off from resting on himself. All figures in the dream are idols, made to save you from the dream, yet they are part of what they have been made to save you from. Judgment is an injustice to God's Son. And it is justice that who judges him will not escape the penalty he laid upon himself within the dream he made. In the dream of judgment, you attack and are condemned and wish to be the slave of idols who are interposed between your judgment and the penalty it brings. Idols are the toys you dream you play with. We pretend they rule the world and give them the power to move about and talk and think and feel and speak for us. Everything they do is in the mind of us who are playing with them. We are eager to forget that we made up a dream in which these toys are real, nor do we recognize that their wishes are our own. We've given the toys our judgments against the unpleasant things in the dream so that the toys act out those judgments for us. We disown these thoughts because we fear them, and we fear them because they bring us guilt. Our toys, our idols, are there to act out thoughts that attack and betray us. Thus, the toys are, in a sense, programmed to attack and betray us. It says in the Course, the dream of judgment is a children's game in which the child becomes the father, powerful, but with the little wisdom of the child. So the child judges what will hurt him and what will help him, but he forms these judgments with his little wisdom. And bad things seem to happen, and he is afraid of all the chaos in the world he thinks is governed by the laws he made. He believes the dream can attack him. He has given his fearful thoughts to his toys, and their reality becomes his own. They seem to save him or protect him, yet they keep his thoughts alive and real and seen outside himself. And so he makes of anything a toy to make his world remain outside himself and play that he is but a part of it. Dreams of judgment are meant to separate the mind from what it thinks. A dream of judgment seeks to prove the dream is being dreamed by someone else. Beneath your hope that an idol will save you lies the guilt and pain of self-betrayal and uncertainty, so deep and bitter that the dream cannot conceal completely all your sense of doom. Your self-betrayal must result in fear, and fear is judgment, leading surely to the frantic search for idols and for death. But forgiving dreams remind you that you live in safety and have not attacked yourself. So do your childish terrors melt away. So from the default identity of the ego self, Judgment seemed to be the way to save ourselves from the penalty of judgment. But this is obviously insane. If judgment caused the world to attack us, we can't then just employ a new kind of attacker to then attack the world and think that that will keep us safe or bring about peace. 
but we are dissociated from the truth of what's going on. We employ idols, people to protect us from the world that seems to be attacking us. And we give these idols and protectors our own judgments on the world. We see it as it's their judgment, they're our protector, but we are the ones that are making up these toys and taking their false reality as our own reality. Judgment carried out by our idols seem to be the way to protect ourselves from its penalty being carried out by the dangers in the dream. The false self image in denial of divinity, this is our self imposed attack. And self betrayal comes with guilt, pain, and fear. And again, fear is a judgment. And this outpictures a dream world which reflects the penalty for our own attack on God's Son. Using little wisdom, we seek idols to protect us from the results of our own dream of judgment. By believing that we need these idols to save us, we double down on the belief that we are not the dreamer, not the Son of God, and not safe. We believe that more judgment, using security idols, will save us from the penalty of judgment, the nightmare we are dreaming. The solution, judge not and awaken. So how do we release judgment? If this fearful dream can be awakened from by not judging, how do we release judgment? All of this takes place within, so we need to look within. And here we're looking at the practice of self-inquiry. And self-inquiry invites us to honestly investigate the belief that our judgments upon the world are accurate. It invites us to investigate the belief that judgment is what somehow keeps us safe or preserves us. We need to also investigate the belief that fear keeps us safe. This is all about recognizing the little wisdom, the childishness of the false ego's judgments, recognizing that as the engine animating the dream world of danger. Fear itself is a judgment. To fear anything is to claim it as separate and apart from you. To even entertain this idea is to claim your own being as vulnerable and in need of protection or idols. Know thyself as the Holy Son of God. Know that nothing is apart from you and need not be held in condemnation or fear. You made up the idea of a self and a world apart from divinity. You can unmake it. In fact, you must. Unmake your dreams of judgment by allowing them to be replaced with forgiveness dreams. Dreams of forgiveness are not true reality, but they are the only kind of dream that does not multiply illusions. Dreams of forgiveness are those held in clear perception or holy vision. This is the highest frequency range available within conscious perception. Clear perception or right-mindedness salvation, lifts the mind into a state where transfer into God's knowledge can take place. The kingdom of heaven is within you, and truly it is you. But we cannot live from, experience, or express this while we willingly retain antichrist beliefs about ourself or our brother or the world. The world that we project, it starts with identity. If myself is the false self of the human ego, then it is from that level of consciousness I will make up and outwardly project a world which is seemingly separate from my own mind. The first error, misidentification, 
is an attack on the truth of myself. And while my consciousness is in denial of divinity, so will my outpictured world reflect a denial of divinity. By judging against myself, I have judged against the Son of God. The penalty or unavoidable consequence of this judgment is the dream of a world that can and does attack me, hurt me, and betray me. In my low state of consciousness, I agree to be afraid of this world because it seems to be dangerous and apart from God's love. As a means of continuing to pretend that I am not the dreamer of my dream, I seek out certain objects or people to protect me from the dangerous world I see. And these figures become my idols or substitutes for love, peace, and security. It's not a secret. You get the dream world that you claim yourself in agreement to. If you see outside yourself a world of danger, attack, and betrayal, it is because you are merely incurring the results of your own attack on yourself, your own betrayal of yourself as the Son of God. The penalty for misidentification with the ego is a world that reflects an attack on Christ. And this world will seem to be separate and apart from me, so its attacks seem to be coming from something outside myself. I have dissociated from the awareness of my own mind as the cause of these thoughts made into images and forms. In truth, the world is projected outward from our mind, but in illusion, the world appears to come at us from the outside. And since we misperceive the source of the danger and attack, we seek to protect ourselves with idols that seem less separate from us. Through misidentification and the resulting projection of our dream of judgment, the world reflects our own dissociation from Christ, our own antichrist beliefs and agreements. We project a world filled with fear's messengers. We make of the dream a field of penalties for our own judgment. We may call this karma or cosmic justice, and it is justice. We cannot attack the truth of Christ and expect to retain awareness of our home in God's kingdom. We make up idols to protect us from the punishing dream, and they carry out the judgments against the nightmare we are dreaming. We imbue these idols with our fear and hatred and condone their attack against the world that appears to attack us. Thus, we program our false saviors to uphold the false reality we ourselves made up. And these so-called protectors will fail us, betray us, and attack us as well. Such is the thought paradigm in which they were born. The barrier we form to protect ourselves from the dangerous dream world is inextricably in allegiance to the nightmare we're attempting to escape. And so the fear loop is perpetuated, rotating the forms and appearances of a world made in denial of divinity. We see the forms of danger and attack change and come and go. As well, we employ changing forms of protective idols and security guards. All the while, we are merely swapping out one nightmare for another and managing to avoid recognizing the one and only source of the problem. Why are we so adamantly unwilling to recognize the actual source of the nightmare? For one, we are afraid of giving up the judgment that produces it. This is why we must perform an honest self-inquiry into our own belief system. Do we really want to keep the judgment? Or do we really want peace and freedom? Do we really want the kingdom of heaven? If our mind is dominated by the ego identity, our sense of value and truth is upside down and insane. 
The kingdom of heaven entails accepting into awareness the Son of God's equality, sinlessness, worthiness, and perfect safety. The ego's distorted narrow perception simply cannot accept the Son of God's reality. The ego needs, indeed survives, on ideas of inequality, competition, scarcity, hierarchy, and specialness. It fears the loss of these and commands the world to prove that they are inescapable realities. When you are ready and willing to change the projection by changing your perception, the highest purpose of every day becomes, in a word, forgiveness. Replacing every grievance with a miracle or replacing every egoic illusion with Christ's unalterable truth. The practice of non-reaction disinvests energy from your miscreations and past agreements. If you're reacting to something as though it were real, you are claiming the agreement to experience it as real to you. But if you are not substantiating antichrist illusions with your own agreement and belief, they have no power to cause any effects in you. Even in the case of manifested forms produced by collective thought energy, just because it appears to be in the dream doesn't mean it has any power to affect you. Remember, today's forms are yesterday's thoughts. There are many instances when a spell-binding illusion is utilized as a catalyst for cracking the shell of false identity. And if the shift in consciousness is willingly accepted, we then see these experiences in the light of gratitude and humility. Learning through contrast is often necessary while the false identity dominates the mind. However, once identity is corrected and fearful judgment is no longer considered a valid lifestyle, our lessons and other extenuating corrections arrive in much gentler forms and experiences. When the truth of the self is I am, then the truth of the world is God is. When the truth of myself is the Christ, and I behold all that I see in trust and loving forgiveness, the world that is reflected back to me is a world of safety and peace.